And in the last part, I want to talk about resolution enhancement. So after all this explanation that there is no K1 of 0.25 or smaller 0.25, uh, and now we want to see if we can circumvent that physical limitation. And of course, the physics is still right. You cannot print anything lithographically with a, point, with a K1 of uh, less than 0.25. But what you can do is you can split your feature. And you see this example here. You print only half of what you print, want to print, which still has a pitch that you can print. You develop, you etch, and now you see here a top view. This is what you get. Now you uh, put photoresist on top of it again. You expose the other half in between that also you can resolve, it sits in between. Now you etch it into to your uh, hard mask here and then you have a feature that has twice the pitch, oh, no, sorry, half the pitch um, that you printed lithographically but if you just take that pitch and you calculate the K1 then of course it's less than 0.25 but we obtain this by two exposures in a sequent. Another trick that is being used all the time is the so-called self uh, spacer uh, process. Uh, so you start with a feature, lithographic printing, then you cover it with an atomic layer deposition of some material, uh, and then you etch it back down, and then you still have the material left. Now it goes all around those lines, of course, so we have to trim off where the spacer material comes around. Uh, which happens here, and now or our original pitch was only three lines if you remember, now we have also doubled our uh, resolution basically. So this is spacer is being used all the times. Uh, there's another relatively cool trick, so if you go on Wikipedia you can see some and I don't know exactly either an uh, inner uh, connect uh, or a metal layer, and you can see these lines, and they, they are not supposed to electrically touch each other. And they look like they, they've been squeezed into each other. And this is a, a technique uh, patented by TSMC. It's called SAIL-2 Spacer Assisted Litho Etch Litho Etch. That's what that stands for. So how does this work? In your first exposure, you only print half of the feature depicted here. This is, of course, simplified, but in the end, that's the essence. Now we put some atomic layer deposition in, and now we print the second feature. And then even if those would overlap lithographically, we have these spacers in between that make sure no material will be there when we fill it with copper, for instance, and then remove everything and then you get these lines with a much higher resolution that you can do optically. Uh, for instance, in your iPhone uh, 10, you have that already in those devices. The last thing that I want to at least mention, it's still a niche application, but you can engineer molecules with certain properties. They're called block uh, copolymers and you can prepare your surface and then they will start landing on your surface and basically self-arrange themselves and you can use this, so all those block polymers, copolymers, they have uh, two different parts that basically tend to, to lie down there and then you get a higher resolution just by self-organization. Problem is these uh, techniques you have uh, always to fight small areas where you have a defect. And the last thing that I want to talk about, transistors going to 3D. I mentioned earlier the transistors usually are on the silicon wafer. So they're the ground level of your device. They're all basically a two-dimensional distribution of transistors and of course you can gain transistor density per area if you stack transistors on top of each other. That's very difficult to do. And the first people who actually did this were the memory people. Uh, we tried to look into one of those to just get some 
some pictures of what Zeiss can do with their crossbeam. Uh, we bought a Samsung VNAND, so that's a solid state uh, drive. There's four chips on there. In each of those chips, when you use X-ray, you can see there's four wafer chips, uh, four, two times four, eight wafer chips. Each of them has uh, 128 gigabit. And uh, when you take one of those chips, which you see here, they're roughly a centimeter by a little less than a centimeter, and uh, do a cross-section of this. So you have a human hair here, 70 cent uh, mi micron, and that was the sample size that we took out of this chip. This is a 3D NAND. When you, every time you have these 2D pictures, it's very difficult to understand how this looks. So what we did is we did uh, cross sections by ion beam etching and we kept, did this multiple times and then took pictures so we took all those measurements rendered it back together of course with a threshold but now you can see a three-dimensional rendering of this chip up here you have the the wires so each of those lines is a wire and that's the bit lines and they connect to these columns here and they basically you have this system of layers that you've seen. And here, of course, you only, this is thresholded, so the chip, of course, is full with material, but here you only see the metal. Each intersection of these column with any of those layers is one transistor that can store one bit. So those people have already gone and stacked transistors in 3D and there is a continuous effort to do this also for logic and other memory devices. Uh, so this is an additional way to increase transistor density per area. So with this, I'd like to summarize that second part. So the resolution of lithography, like in any other system, is determined or not whether the plus minus first order can pass through the lens. That's what determines resolution. Uh, lithography lenses require extremely small aberration levels, smaller than any other optical systems that we know of. Uh, at high NA, we even need to use polarization. Uh, a lithographer always needs to consider variations in his process, so he needs to understand what his process window is and needs to make sure he sets up his process so that he gets the largest possible process window. And device technologies now also use other tricks to further increase the transistor density, like litho etch to the N. So litho etch, litho etch. You've seen you can even do this three or four times. It becomes increasingly more difficult, of course, and expensive. Spacer, sail to 3D integration. With this, I conclude the introduction to basics of lithography.